Hello again, this is UML Operator. Okay, at this point, we're understanding the default layout and tooling. Now we're gonna start customizing our Sparks Enterprise Architect, or EA, workspace. So let's load our demo project out of recent right here. I'm gonna go ahead and select that. In the browser, you're on the left side, you're gonna see it load the packages for this project. And let's just go to one of the diagrams that we created. So the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is bring up our toolbox. So as we showed in the previous video, there's two ways to do that. In the Start tab right here, you can go to Design and select Toolbox, or you can go to the Design tab and you'll find Toolbox under the Diagram group. So let's select it. So now we have our Toolbox and it popped up here to the right of the browser to the left of the work area. So if you're in the default layout and your screen doesn't look like this, there's a couple things you can do. One, you can go ahead and go back to start. You can go to workspace and you can load the default layout. It should look like this, no toolbox. And then you can go to uh, design and you can load toolbox and there we go. All right, let's start playing. So the toolbox is between the browser and the work area. If you select the header of the toolbox, hold down the left mouse button, you can move it anywhere you want. You'll notice when I select it, hold down the left mouse button, start dragging it. I get these tools that pop up that show me places that I can drag this. So I can put it to the right of the work area. I can put it back to the left of the work area. I can put it at the top of, of the work area, which is kind of silly. Um, and I can put it at the bottom of the work area and I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna put it to the left of the browser. And then I'm going to hold down the left mouse button and size this to a width that I want that works within the screen, right? So I can also put it to the right of the work area inside a window. I'll do that again, right? So as I'm dragging it inside a window, you notice that the drop locations change for that window. So I can put it actually as a tab in the properties window. So I can go between properties and toolbox. But then what I have to do if I wanna move it, because if I grab this, it moves properties and that, and that's not what I wanna do. So, um, and I don't want it there, I want it above notes. So you see how those drop areas open up, but I wanna just move the toolbox. So I'm holding down the left mouse button, dragging it to a place I want it, and we're gonna put it on the left side and we're going to size the toolbox so that it works best for us. Let's make the browser a little less wide. And, you know, in this particular screen configuration, the size of this monitor display, now this may be a productive workspace. Maybe I can move this over and, and widen this up a little bit more. So you might wanna pause right the video right now and play around a little bit more till you feel comfortable with dragging windows around and dropping them within the drop zones that Sparks provides for you. But what we wanna do now is save this workspace so that we can use it later on. All right, to get to workspaces, you can see we're in the start tab and you can see something called workspaces here in the all windows group. I'm gonna go ahead and select it. So you see workspaces, these red ones, dark red, however it looks to you, these are the system, CSS type system. You can't configure these. These are set by the factory and you can't edit them, right? But if you go to my workspaces, and you can see I have three custom workspaces already created. Here's where you can create your custom workspaces, as many as you want. You can see they're a blue color and the type is custom, right? We're not gonna talk about technology type at this point. We'll talk about that later. And we're not gonna talk about my ribbon sets. You can actually configure that as well. So we're gonna use my workspaces. Let me go ahead and close this. In the previous video, we talked about the custom access. Remember, quick access toolbar. You can also get the workspaces here and you can select my workspaces and it brings up the workspace layout dialog box focused on my workspaces. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the create new button here in the dialog box. Go ahead and select it. You have this new dialog box that lists the custom that I already have. Yours may be blank. And we're gonna give it a name. 
right? So custom workspace layout name. And you want to give it a meaningful name. I almost want to say unique name. And we're just going to call this my default layout or whatever you want to call it. We're just going to call it that. Leave this checked, include active custom views. Leave that checked for now until you we learn and understand what that means when you're creating a custom workspace, All right? So I'm going to hit save. And there you go, it's done. If we go to wor workspaces and we go to my workspaces, we can see that that's chosen, right? And I'm gonna hit close. If we use the quick access, my workspaces, I get right to it. You can see the one that we have here is already selected for us. And we just simply hit apply and it will go through and apply that workspace just how you saved it. Okay. Okay. Always do a test. You can do things like mess things up by moving, hold down the left mouse button, just moving things around, kind of messing things up. Or you could go to workspaces and load the default factory layout, hit apply. And we're back to the factory layout, right? So back to the factory layout. Let me go ahead and close that. I want to sh open it and show you us loading your custom workspace. So we're going to go to workspaces this way, my workspaces, and we're going to select my default layout, and we're going to select apply, right? So it loaded your default or our default layout that we just configured and saved with a toolbox over on the left. Now you can unpin this so toolboxes hot hidden, auto hide. So when you mouse over it, it pops up for you. And you can save that by simply, if you want to change your, your setting, you go to my workspaces and you can give it a new name, you know, create new and give it a new name. Or you can, let's go here again, my workspaces. We're going to right click on this and we're going to delete it or copy it as new so that you can edit it. We're going to delete it because I want to show you how to delete custom workspaces. And then we'll come down here and hit create new. And we're going to call it uh, my default or whatever name because, you know, you might want to give it a new name and hit save. All right. And now if we go to, we're going to go up to the quick access, hit workspaces, go to default or anything that takes us away from our custom layout, hit apply. We're back to the default. All right now we're going to go to workspaces my workspaces my default and we're going to hit apply and you can see that it remembered that you wanted it auto hidden and it'll be off to the left when you mouse over it tools will pop out and allow you to start doing modeling now notice that the diagram is loaded here this diagram didn't come up when i hit save and i'm going to prove that for you right now what we're going to do is we're going to go to workspaces, my workspaces, and we're going to load my default workspace. So it doesn't remember what diagram is in the work area. We'll talk about that later when we get into shortcuts, working sets, and so on. But it's just working on the workspace layout. You could come up here and then you want a wider work area. What we want to do is minimize the ribbon. We talked about this in another video. But now I've got a larger area. Let's go ahead and load the diagram again. And we're going to go ahead and save this workspace, right? And so what we're going to do is, well, I don't see the workspace thing. So if you select tab, the ribbon pops out for you because we've got it hidden, right? And we can get to workspaces this way, or we can go up here, quick access, and we get to it this way. We're going to go to my workspaces. And then what we're going to do is create new. And then we're going to call this no ribbon, right? And I'm going to save. And now I've got a layout and we're going to go to quick access, my workspaces. I'm going to go back to my default layout and hit apply, right? Here it is with the ribbon exposed. Again, toolbox is auto hidden. So mouse over, it'll pop up. Or I can go to my workspaces. And I can go no ribbon, hit apply. And this just sets it where the ribbon is hidden or 
minimized. If I select minimize the ribbon again from quick access, let me do that slower. Go up here, we'll drop down, it's back, all right? If I go to toolbox and I wanna show it, I hit this pin, you see this pin is pointing to the left? That means it's on auto hide. I mouse over it again, I click the pin, see the pin pointing down? That means it's locked or open, all right? So lots of ways to very quickly modify your workspace to work most productively for you. So I hope this has helped you. So in this session, we added a toolbox to the default layout. We moved some windows around so that we could get a feel for how to customize our workspace. We customized the workspace. We created a new workspace. We tested our custom workspace. We made some changes to our workspace and we created another workspace. In our next session, we're going to dive down a little bit deeper into customizing this default layout that we've just created. We're gonna get into other tooling and features within Sparks Enterprise Architect. I'm gonna show you how to move windows around, bring in other tooling that helps you further expand your ability to do things within Sparks. And so I look forward to that particular session. Thanks very much for watching and I'll talk to you all later.